welcome to another episode of Serum Audio. Uh, we're, it's another service-based episode here. Uh, and as always, I am Sean Tabor. Uh, Joel Lindstrom is off on assignment trying to find himself. So I have a guest with me today. Uh, someone that, uh, that I've been following for a while and we finally got to meet in person before this whole pandemic started, which was very fortuitous, at one of the local uh, events in Tampa. And that's uh, Dion Taylor from, uh, well, you're from, you're working at RSM US, right? Correct. Yep. And, yep. And you're a director, TMC, of business applications. That is correct. Yeah. Move with right, a focus cool. on pre sales. Yep. Cool. So, Dion, tell, for, for those of, for those of the uh, audience that don't really know who you are or haven't followed you or haven't read your blog, even though you put out an enormous amount of content that makes me jealous, <laughs> like I'm not being efficient with my time, um, can you just tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, what you do, and sure. how you got involved in, in the Dynamics community? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and first of all, thank you so much for having me, uh, Sean. Uh, it's, it was great to meet you uh, in person as well, because I've been following you for a long time, obviously, as well. Um, yeah, I started working with the application, um, oh my gosh, back in 2011, time flies, mm -hmm. where um, I, I used to be, I used to have more of like an admin job. So I did, did like HR for a little bit and I always wanted to get into IT. So I um, <clears throat> had a conversation with management and basically they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I, I didn't know. So talked to the CEO, heard about it. And he was like, hey, we're starting this thing called Dynamic CRM. Do you want to do it? And I was like, I have no idea what that is, but I'm, I'm totally in. So that's kind of how I started um, doing implementations, doing pre-sales, because um, I was the CRM practice, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot of other people because we could just start it out. <clears throat> then moved to uh, lead the CRM practice at CBiz, worked there for, oh gosh, I don't even know, four years or something like that. Also doing implementations and all that kind of good stuff. And then when I got to RSM, um, it already started to become really large, right? Uh, Dynamics 365 customer engagement, where now we have field service and we have PSA and we didn't have any of that in the past. So right. I was like, can I just, you know, be on the side of, of, of sales where I really get to play around with the software, right? I'm right. the first person usually to touch it which is sometimes really, really hard because, you know, a lot of times there's not, I mean, I do have to say Microsoft is getting so much better at putting the documentation out now mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. like, right, five, six, seven years ago. Oh, God. Um, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is when I, when I got to like, you know, blogs, like people like you and, and like other people in the community where you would just have to search the internet and like try to figure out how all this stuff worked. So yeah that's kind of it in a nutshell well and, and you and i also found it fascinating that you're originally from the netherlands that is correct and i did not work in it whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> i was always interested by it but i never i was i, I worked as a hairdresser for uh close to 10 years and then i worked in retail so um, yeah, very, very, very different. The, the thing is, though, what I what I basically was able to do in this country, I don't think I would have been able to do that in my own country because they would have said, well, you want to do something in IT, you have to go back to school, right? right? Even though a lot of this stuff that we're doing is, you can't really go to college for that, right? You can do some training, but... <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, it's very different. We are in a, we are in a very unique uh, industry where you can kind of, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and learn stuff on your own and get get a position and grow that way. Uh, I totally agree. You know, not there's not a lot of industries that are that are not um uh you know, uh, I, I don't want to say hard labor cuz that's not the right term, but you know, where where they're more blue collar, you could do that in those kind of yeah. uh, careers, but in, in in something more business oriented, that's that sometimes is very is very tough. So yeah, I always found that fascinating. And, and I, I I also it's kind of funny whenever we go to uh, uh, MVP summit or anything like that, 
and we get a group of MVPs. I, for some reason, I gravitate towards the European MVPs. It's like I spend enough time with my American counterparts. Uh, you know, they, I get I'll, that. I'll get back to them. I'm going to hang out with all my European friends. So I've made quite a few friends uh, uh, awesome. across the pond. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really cool. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, made me want to, to reach out and have you on the podcast is um, we were talking about uh, the new field service mobile uh, app. Yeah. And um, that whole process was very interesting to me. And your, your blog article was really great, which we'll put a link in the show notes to that. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about the, the new field service mobile app because we're kind of at a tipping point for Dynamics 365 field service yeah. where it it's not quite up to parity. And, you know, Ben has said it'll be at parity, hopefully in the October timeframe, which is great news. But there's still a place for Rusco, um, for the Woodford based tool, let's call it that, not the Rusco tool because it's not the right. Rusco app. There's still a place for the Woodford based uh, mobile app. And there's still a lot of customers on the, mo- the Woodford based mobile app. Um, so a couple of things that, that called out to mind for me uh, when this first was announced was right now there's no real migration path from one to the other. Yeah. And not right now, not all the capabilities are there from one to the other. But other than that, yeah. what are your thoughts about short term versus long term with the field service mobile app? Well, I, I really like the documentation um, that was on the docs.microsoft.com site in regards to this, where they're also kind of saying like, and I, I'm, I, I, I'm just thinking about what, it, what I remember what it said on the site from the top of my head, but they mm-hmm. said something like, if you're doing simple, you know, Dynamics 365 types of implementations, you can use the app. And honestly, I, I do agree with that. I, I do mm-hmm. agree with you as well. Is that we're probably not like, there's still a lot missing, like, push notifications, geofencing, you know, if you're using IoT, then IoT, then IoT alerts and scanning to find an asset, then, you know, there's some other stuff like that as well. But I, I it does come a, a long way, even like right after it being launched, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did talk to a couple of people at RSM as well. Um, this morning, actually, I talked to Brian, who was kind of like logging in, and he was like, looking at some of the things. And, and he also said from the bat, like, like, there's just stuff that I'm missing, like being mm-hmm. able to, um, you know, put what any anything you want on to uh, a map. Like you can do very easily in Resco, right? By mm-hmm. by just a couple of quicks, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are very important, um, obviously, because we have a lot of customers that like that type of stuff, right? Um, I'm sure that shouldn't be that hard, though, to to you know implement something like that in uh dynamics but i have to tell you when i was on that um mvp uh what is it P- pgi call and i asked the question of what what they were thinking in regards to uh, the mobile app and if that would be replaced by a power app i actually thought that they were talking about a canvas app so when the answer was <laughs> yes <laughs> I was getting really nervous because I'm not very familiar with power apps. I've tried some of it maybe, right. I don't know, like eight months ago. And I, I for me, it was kind of hard because I'm, I'm not um, a code or anything like that. Not right. saying that you need to know code, but even the little stuff that you need to know, I'm not very familiar with. Right. So it made me very nervous. But then they started talking about um, right what they basically did. It, it's going to be a model-driven app, which right. I think is is great because a lot of people and sean i don't know what your experience is because you do the implementations i'm, I'm just for this now just mm-hmm. on the sales side of it right but when you when you hear people that they actually realize and and this is the feedback that i get when i was going to events but when you know when if they realize that it is a different it, platform right woodford is different it's right. basically you have to learn all that from scratch people get a little nervous i'm not sure what right. your experience is with that well yeah <clears throat> it's always a it's always a factor in a customer's mindset when you're saying okay it, yes we have field service mobile they automatically assume it's microsoft yeah you know all the way through 
then when you explain you know how what the infrastructure of the mobile solution is there is there's always a a certain level of trepidation about supporting the mobile solution going forward because this they're like is this a new thing i have to learn well yes and no it's still it's still a solution in dynamics it's you know it's still the same concepts it's just a little bit different in the configuration you have two different configuration paths um you know just because you have your work order just so or your bookings just so that doesn't mean the mobile app is exactly the same you have to make those changes so once you get them past that initial hurdle they seem to be okay yeah and uh, they can also see some some real um capabilities with the wood for base uh mobile app but the customers that i've been talking to who have very minor um requirements like literally i need to be able to see my bookings i need to be able to complete my bookings yeah and that's it the the microsoft uh, field service mobile app fits perfect and i agree visually it is just beautiful i you know? agree <laughs> you know i mean comparatively with the blue and the gray as opposed to the um the new field service mobile app it's just night and day um it, it yeah. it's it's really you know and and i know that uh you know resco has done some you know they they've laid off the uh entity requirements or restrictions and you know uh, allowed you to add some of the sales items to the field service mobile app as long as you're a field service tech or a resource right right. um but the difficulty to me is comes into what if i have a resource scheduling solution that i'm trying to implement that's not necessarily field service but for example what if I want to schedule my salespeople to go out on calls? Yeah, yep. you know? that is a really good point. You know, so having the ability to have salespeople in the same app as your field service techs or enabling functionality and capability in the Dynamics um, mobile app that for um, schedule bookable resources in general, I think is is going to be a huge huge win for for us in general i think yeah oh i i definitely agree with you i definitely agree with you i'm i'm just there in my opinion there's like so much you can do with resco though i i remember when because we raw pike at, at rsm and myself we were the first two people actually at rsm too as soon as microsoft had purchased it and i think rob even worked with it uh when it was still field one before mm-hmm. microsoft purchased it so we, we were there from the beginning, right? Just like you, which is great because then you can kind of see it grow. But I, I remember the first time, you know, starting to learn about the, the Woodford, Resco's piece in that, the mobile application part of that. It's like in the beginning, it's kind of like, okay, you're trying to see how it works. But once you get the hang of it, it's like, there's some pretty cool things you can do with the application yes. that we cannot yet do. Um, with the, you know, with the new field service mobile app, which of course right. is normal because it just came out. But right. for example, I actually was able to build uh, this this uh, dashboard that allows me to, first of all, see what I have in my truck. And I believe mm-hmm. I wrote an article about that as well. It's like, um, you know, a, a, an inventory dashboard. And then on the other hand, it's showing me um, – uh, what what I need for my work orders in this particular week. Then if you actually click inside of that, right, that work order product, because that's really what it is, I actually have some fetch XML there that is showing me that particular item. It's showing uh, in which warehouse it is. So we can't do that today. But right. I, I think those types of functionality would would be great if we can do some extended fetch xml right Mm -hmm. Uh, that we can just throw in there basically currently we can't really right you can go down one and that's that's basically about it (laughs) right right look at advanced uh fine you can do a little bit more but yeah yeah and i think as as you start to see you know like the asset management solution expand and more more objects are in cds as opposed to you know just straight f and o or or whatever erp you're, you're dealing with but having the ability to build more within CDS and add that to the to the mobile app. Um, I think there's a lot of potential. There's a, so much potential 
Um, it, it's really going to come down to, for me, what what uh, can all the actions that are happening on your existing forms just flow right over to the mobile app? So far, that looks to be the case. Yeah. Um, can we can we leverage PCF controls um, on the mobile app and to to maintain that user experience that we have on on the uh, uh, unified interface and what is going to be the interaction with canvas pages when that finally comes or or embedded canvas apps um, yeah you know you know what what's that motion so there's just so much potential there and and you know doing doing your competitive analysis like you do especially when you're dealing with with sales um, looking at other competitors um, field service mobile applications, um, a lot of customers want to get to a point where it's like working on an iPhone. Like, you know, oh, yeah. it's that simple. Yeah. And we're, we're not quite there yet. We're still a little clicky. Um, so being able to understand how we can insert um, maybe a Canvas app on top that that simplifies the UI, then natively deep, natively deep links into the uh, field service mobile app, I can see some potential to do cool things like that there. And you could do those things with with the Woodford-based uh, field service mobile now, but it's right. just clunky. It's not it's not clean, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and yeah, then and you I, deal with authentication and all kinds of other stuff, so. And I agree with you as well. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, you know, just look at CRM itself, right? If I can call it that, when it started out as Dynamics mm -hmm. 365 or Dynamics CRM, if you look at that like 10 years ago versus now, it's like you don't even recognize the software right. anymore, right? So I am so stoked about some of this new stuff um, that Microsoft is doing. Uh, you know, look look at what they're doing with inspections. I mean, there's some yeah. really cool stuff happening there as well. Um, so I am so super stoked in regards to uh, seeing what's, what it's going to look like, right? Like you, what you're saying, probably like in October, they're going to be uh, a lot further um, up there, but I, I, I think the sky's the limit basically here, right? I mean, like you said, as soon as we moved to the new interface, the unified interface, there was a lot more stuff that came available to us, yeah. which, which is going to be, you know, obviously we're going to have that, um, I believe in a field service mobile app, uh, as well. And I honestly, I thought they did an amazing job in that, in that first, um, you know, in that in that first try, basically the first release, I should say, right? Right. Where right. I believe they have, uh, you know, they're doing similar to what they have in Resco, where we have those two entities combined in one form, right? The work order mm -hmm. and the booking, mm -hmm. which they have on here as well. And we mm -hmm. we can't currently use that for other entities, um, but I'm sure that's going to be something that's going to be, you know, additional type of configuration that we're going to be able to use throughout the application, not just for field service mobile. Right. But um, I'm so stoked. But I, I agree with you. I mean, it looks very, very slick um, what they did so far. It's you know you, you mentioned inspections a second ago. Have you have you looked at it since they uh, updated the preview? I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, I'm. I can't believe you just said that. I'm actually writing my article. Um, <laughs> of I, course I, you are. <laughs> you know, I, I, I am not going to lie to you. I am not going to lie to you. Last night, I wrote a blog post about uh, about preview features. Uh, that should be posting any minute now um, about about accessing preview features for field service. And I said, you know, I should really just stick it out and I should write the post for inspections because if I don't, I know Dion's going to come out with one first and then I'm going to yep. figure out what to talk about. And yeah, there you go. So I can't win. So I'm not even going to try. So so good well, on I you. Still, I still I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like, but I, no, it, you, no, you it's know, totally fine. Okay. No, I know it. It's still though, like in my opinion, it's like even if you know if, if somebody else already wrote a blog article about it, you can still write your own version though, because a lot of times, yeah. you know, you might bring other stuff to somebody's attention just by wording things differently. You know what I mean? So, and and it really how I look at it because I used to be crippled by that analysis, you know, that analysis paralysis when I'm trying to rewrite a blog that's different yeah. from everybody. And I, I finally had to stop myself and say, look, when you're writing, you're writing in your voice. You know, it's not you're not regurgitating what someone else says. Right. Write about what you know. Write about your experience. Write about how right. you, you see it. 
and you know in in like in my examples when i do articles like that you know i always try to make it fun and i and i do an article um i do an article that talk, has references that's based in star wars oh i no love one, that you know, no one's doing that so that's what i do and it makes it fun for me to build my scenarios so my inspection one will be star wars based as well but um, that's why you love my Power Virtual Agent one so much, because that was Star Wars based. That is exactly right. <laughs> that is exactly right. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. I love that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there's a there's room for everybody's voice out there in the community. Oh, I agree. And, and you should never be worried that you're 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 not gonna have a take that's uh that's fresh or or, or you're gonna be regurgitating. As long as I'm not or anybody is not just reading what someone else writes and then just saying, you know, Dion said, and then here's oh, my, yeah. I hate yeah. those. Don't do that. I, I don't like those either. That's, no. that's exactly right. Cause you know what? A lot of times when you're, when you're writing some of this stuff, at least I try to put that in there right. is, is your opinion. Like, you know, right. this, Oh my God, I love this feature. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to love it. Maybe you're like interested in, in, in a different type of feature, right? Just like right. the field service mobile app, you know? Right. Um, I, I just love to get other people's feedback on how, what their experience is, basically what we're doing right now in this conversation. Like, hey, you've, you've kind of looked at it. You wrote an article about it. You played around with it. What do you think, you know, is going to be a good thing in the future for people to use it versus, you know, what, what are some of the things that they might consider that to be an issue, right? Right. I, I, I think it's all about that. I totally agree. Um, but I totally agree with you as well on the, you know, so-and-so said, but my take on it, it's just very negative, right? Yeah. And I, I want to stay away from that as much as I can, I can and I can as well, because I love this community so much. Like I, everybody that I've interacted with is really amazing. Um, all of the MVPs are amazing. All of the people that are not MVPs yet and trying to get there and even people that are not trying to get there, they're all amazing. Like I have not met a person that's not amazing up to this day, which is, yeah. um, is great. You know, we, we just reach out to each other and like, Hey, I, I can't get this to work. Can you help? Right. Um, I, I just love that, that everybody's there for one another. Yeah. It's, it's a great, it's a great second family. That's for sure. That's yes, true. for sure. Well, well, Dion, this has been awesome. I've loved talking about this. And, you know, I'm going to have you on again. We'll talk about something else because this was Sounds fun. great. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me, Sean. I appreciate it. No problem. Glad to do it. And for everybody else listening, um, I'll put all the links that we talked about uh, related to uh, Dion's article on Field Service Mobile, as well as the inventory dashboard uh, in the show notes. So check there. And uh, Dion, before we jump, if anybody wants to reach you on the interwebs, how do you want them to reach you? So they can go to D365, so that's D as in dog, 365goddess.com. That's my blog. And that's also my Twitter handle, D365goddess. And you can also reach me on LinkedIn. I will give you that link as well that you can maybe also put in there as well. And again, put them in the show notes. Great. Thanks for having me, Sean. I appreciate it. It's been a blast. So everybody, uh, thank you for listening. And as always... I'm going to say it like old school. We're at your service. Have a great day.